Hey everybody, it's Michael. Welcome back to the Sunset Single Player. In this new video today, we're going to be going over the Demon Souls remake. This is level 2-1, the Smithing's Grounds. And in this level, we'll be taking on the Armored Spider boss fight. I'm having a lot of fun with this game. It's definitely challenging. And for those of you that didn't know, I haven't played the original Demon Souls out there. The only From Software game originally I've beaten and played through is Sekiro. Played a little bit of Bloodborne. And I thought this would be a good place to jump in. I'd like to get back into Bloodborne. If they ever do a 60 FPS 4K patch on PS5, that could be awesome. But today it's all about the Demon Souls remake. And we're going on to take this big spider down running through this molten level here. I actually did get a shortcut that allowed me to get through here. You're gonna to wanna to look out for these big guys with the pickaxes, they can do a lot of damage. And also the smaller, kind of golem looking guys, Lord of the Ring looking guys with those fire swords as well, they can pack a punch if you're not careful. This remake was actually developed by Blue Point Games out of Texas in a second party relationship to Sony and they also did the Shadow of the Colossus remake for those of you out there that have played that game. And here this is important, coming up here once you find this little tunnel you do see a fat official at the end of the hallway. These are a really cool enemy design, I really like seeing these guys throughout the World 2 in this game. They kind of launch fireballs at you and they're really fast. Some of them even have whips if you get up close. You can really do a lot of damage. I did upgrade this compound bow to I think plus two or plus three by using souls. And I think it takes some hardstone shards as well in the nexus. And you can just use this to pop them a few times rather than getting up close and personal. And he does drop a fairly generous 822 souls, which is really, really good. So my overall build in the game this time for this playthrough, I did go as the knight. And I do want to get up close and personal and have a melee based playthrough for my first time through this game. I know you can go the royalty route and kind of cast magic to make things easier. But I did kind of want to challenge myself for my first run through this game. And this shield you see here, this is actually the hoplite shield. Really, really strong. It's not even upgraded just because it's pretty much a tank. And I haven't even had the need to upgrade it yet. My knight is also sporting the longsword. I think it's at plus two or plus three upgrade wise. Very suitable for this fight. Definitely recommend it. Although if I did switch earlier as of the time of this fight to the Crescent Falchion, which I did just get in World 4-1 that I'm trying to use on the next boss fight, I think that I might have even had an easier time taking down the spider. The Crescent Falchion is just really, really good. And I think for this fight, I'm about a level 35, I want to say, which might even be a little bit over-leveled. I did take a lot of time to grind the early areas. And there's the fog and this fiery tunnel, just really great atmospherically. So as we roll in and some melancholy, just beautiful violin music starts playing overhead, we do want to dodge this guy's fireballs and webs. And you'll see in this fight, this wasn't a great run, even though I did get the best of them just in terms of me dodging the webs at least. They're really hard to kind of see where they're coming from. And if you don't dodge the webs right, his fire will get you because you're just basically paralyzed in place when he gets you with the web. And you do just want to heal intermittently. This definitely was not a good run, but luckily I had a lot of grass. And once we get up close, I'll show you guys the best strategy to take this guy down. So the key to this fight for me is just blocking with my big shield and knowing the right time to strike while also dodging fire if that suits you better than blocking and dodging the webs, which again are really hard to see. You'll see that one just flew by me on the right hand side and I dodged the last possible second. So whenever he does that crisscross kind of big attack there, you want to make sure you block that with your sword. Then he has that middle part to him and the legs come down on the side. You just want to really do heavy attacks or a bunch of light attacks on that kind of oval type moon shaped claw he has on the bottom of his body. You can definitely get some great hits in there. And while I did really like the Tower Knight and Phalanx boss fights before this, I think from an atmosphere standpoint, this has been my favorite so far. I love just coming down in this fiery dark tunnel to fight the spider in just a narrow hallway. And this attack here, so whenever he launches his kind of fire riverbed at you, you just want to run all the way back. It's pretty slow and easy to avoid. I haven't found myself getting hit by that too, too often. Again, it's just the webs that you just saw there that give me a lot of trouble in conjunction with this fire after he stuns you in the web like he did just right there. And there is a great item you can use for this fight that I don't actually equip here 
because it is expensive. It does cost 500 souls to receive, and it's called the Sticky White Slime. And apparently, it basically infuses your weapon with magic damage and is really effective against a lot of the bosses in World 2, like the Armored Spider. And I should correct that. It's actually 5,000 souls for the Sticky White Slime, not 500. If it were 500, I'd be stocked the hell up with that because the fat officials alone give you like 800 souls. And that's another good point I want to make. There was a really good farming spot I found in World 1-3. So after you beat the Tower Knight, you unlock the 1-3 Archstone. Although technically you can't really start the level yet, but you can summon yourself to the Archstone there. And there's two blue-eyed knights there. They drop a lot of half moon grass and about 450 souls each. So that saved me a ton of time and just helped in my grinding. So hopefully you guys, if you don't know about that yet, hopefully that'll help you out and save you a lot of time if you need souls and or grass to help you with certain areas of this game. One thing I love about this game too is that different items are great for different situations. So whereas you want to use the fire bombs and the pine resin in World 1-1 against Phalanx, the Armored Spider is actually resistant to that, which makes a lot of sense since he is kind of on fire himself. And when I'm not getting absolutely demolished, and just watch me heal real quick here, just want to always make sure you have some good health so you're not one shot away by this guy. But if you will notice, the Hoplite Shield is just so good. So not only does it block his cross attack there, but it also really blocks his fireballs and only takes a little bit of damage if you get hit by one of those with a full block. Whereas if you use something like the Knight Shield, it's going to not take as much of the blow and you're going to take more damage yourself. So again, with this fight, you just want to know when to get close, be able to block his cross attack, and just time that right. I actually missed that one there. And just wail away at that little claw thing in the middle of him. And just rinse and repeat. Definitely get a few slashes in and run away. Otherwise, he can kind of drop his legs down and one-hit you. So definitely be careful of that. And then just mix in running back to the, the fog gate when he throws that flame bed at you. Another item I really like in this game is the Sharpening Stone, or it might be Edge Sharpening Stone or something like that. And it basically repairs your right-handed weapon, which has definitely saved me a bunch of times. One time, it was actually the Tower Knight boss fight, I had my weapon break, and I was having a lot of trouble against him in the first place. And that run was actually the fight I beat him, because I was able to use that Sharpening Stone and sharpen and repair my sword rather than have to likely die and then head all the way back to the Nexus to get that repaired there. So far in this playthrough, and I know I'm still fairly early, but so far I do think this game is easier than Sekiro was. I remember just having a lot of trouble on certain Sekiro bosses, whereas most of the Demon Souls bosses I've been able to take down between like 5 and 10 tries, whereas some of the Sekiro ones just take so much longer because that game is just so precise with the parrying and blocking, whereas I feel like Demon Souls just has a bigger margin for error. You can make more mistakes and heal. In terms of which game I actually like better, that's an interesting question. I will give a final answer on that once I'm through with this game, because I, I did really enjoy Sekiro, but so far there's just something about this that I'm really, really digging. I love the whole molten lava aspect of World 2, and... The gates of Boletaria were really cool in 1-1. The Tower Knight fight, that was incredible. It blew my mind. That atmosphere was crazy. So it's definitely a good question. I mean, Sekiro had some great bosses, really memorable fights in the Guardian Ape and Divine Dragon. But something about Demon Souls, I'm just really liking the slower-paced combat, a little bit slower than Sekiro, and just really unique. And it's cool to know that this game is what started it all as well. I did play Hollow Knight about a year ago through that game. Really strong game that definitely borrowed from the Souls genre just with dropping the souls and picking them up from where you last died. And I think it's a really unique and cool gameplay mechanic that if you die twice on your way to get your souls, you lose them. But it does give you one chance to get them back. I just think it's a really unique gameplay mechanic. And here we are now after rinsing and repeating that and dodging that fire bed one more time. I was actually thinking about cheesing him for his last couple hits with my bow and arrow here, but I decided to do the entire fight legit. And apparently with the royalty class, you can just spam magic from back, all the way back here, and you could probably spam him with bow and arrow too, although I didn't try that. But I'm sure I could have taken him out with one more hit here, but gotta stay tried and true to the melee based formula and hopefully just dodge these last fireballs and vanquish this demon. 
So just use the big boy shield and block that attack. One more hit. And that's the armor spider, guys. Hopefully that guide helped you guys out. Thanks so much for stopping by. I thought this was a really cool fight, and I hope you guys feel the same way. If this guide helped you guys out, please leave a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing to the channel. I imagine I'll have a lot more Demon Souls content coming soon. In addition to other PlayStation 5 titles that I plan on covering, I did do video reviews for Spider-Man Miles Morales and Assassin's Creed Valhalla if you want to check those out as well. I also run a weekly video game podcast called The Sunset Single Player, focused in on single player games, mostly on PlayStation 5 at this point. It goes live every Tuesday. I did leave the link to that show in the description of the episode today if you guys would like to check it out. I'd really appreciate it. But until next time, guys, I'm sure we'll have some more Demon Souls content coming soon. But thanks so much for stopping by, and take care.